and welcome to our show health and wellness myths and facts hormones are integral to our body systems and they regulate a lot of what our body does hormones are powerful it takes only a tiny amount to cause big changes in cells or even the whole body that is why too much or too little of a certain hormone can have a serious effects men and women are quite different when it comes to hormones and however hormonal imbalance is more common in women than in men women's reproductive health fertility and menopause often involves the topic of hormones and when female hormonal imbalance becomes an issue the consequences can manifest themselves throughout the body taking a toll on a woman's health and quality of life there can uh, there are some conditions that can be prevented by modifying one's lifestyle Hormonal disorders can generally be managed well with proper medicines as well as treatment. We have an expert panel of endocrinologists who will provide accurate as well as actionable advice to prevent the development of hormonal disorders and quite uh, guide our viewers towards effective long-term management strategies. as well so uh, well let's uh, welcome our panel uh, our doctors we have dr ipshita mishra assistant professor at the department of endocrinology scb medical college from katak we also have dr emi uh, grewal associate director of endocrinology as well as diabetes from max super speciality hospital in mohali and dr hema singh consultant in hod department of endocrinology metro mas uh, this is the hospital in jaipur thank you so much for joining us here on ndtv my first question is for dr mishra hormones affect the quality of life of both men and women how do hormones affect women's health is my first question dr ipshita thank you thank you divya for the question uh, well you have already given a very brief introduction about how hormones play an integral part in the survival of human life now when we talk of hormones the multitude of hormones in both the sexes male and female they are almost similar but some hormones need special mention for a female especially the reproductive hormones of which we call as the sex steroids thyroid hormones and something called as prolactin now these hormones they influence the most important health of a woman that is the reproductive health right from the onset of the menopause the menarche and everything is influenced influenced by these hormones including the fertility issues apart from this one of the most important health factor for women is the bone health which is very neglected and these hormones they influence a lot to take care of the bone health of women and definitely to some extent about the metabolic and the cardiac health right uh, thank you so much uh, for uh, providing us uh, with that information my second question is for dr grewal uh, dr women are more likely to develop uh, hormonal imbalance disorders than men why is it so and what are the steps that women can take to minimize the risk of hormonal disorder dr emi grewal yeah if we see that the most of the hormones like in the females and males are similar it is only the sex hormones that are different so what happens in the male it's higher testosterone levels and in the females it is estrogen and progesterone which is on the higher side so this high estrogen sometimes can lead to autoimmune diseases these are the diseases in which the body attacks its own cells so that leads to the dysfunction for example thyroid disorders hypo as well as hyperthyroidism is much more common in females uh then second reason is that in the females that during the various phases of life for example in puberty in menopause and in pregnancy there is wide fluctuations in the hormone levels so that leads to uh, increase incidence of hormone imbalance for example like in pregnancy there is more of hypothyroidism in pcod and uh, in uh, puberty and also in the menopause there is rapid decline in the hormone level so that leads to abnormal fat deposition we know that estrogen causes less of abdominal fat deposition so in the menopause they have more abdominal fat deposition that leads to obesity diabetes and other hormonal imbalances and also because rapid fall in the hormones leads to osteoporosis so for in any case as we already said that lifestyle modification is very important healthy diets healthy diet with a balanced calcium and protein and good amount of exercise and also very important is that patient should have regular check up so that any of these disease can be caught at the earliest and treated well right doctor very crucial point there uh, to keep getting oneself checked uh, in order to know if everything is okay or not now my next question is for dr singh uh, what are some of the common disorders affecting the female reproductive system dr hema singh 
So the female uh, reproductive system is actually very delicate. Even little changes in hormones can lead to many problems. So when we discuss the reproductive problems, let's just divide them age-wise. So if we talk about the young girls, the most common problems which we are facing nowadays are the people, the girls are getting early pubertal changes, then some have delayed puberty. And once the menarche sets in, there are certain menstrual irregularities, which may be either excess menses or there are scanty menses or delayed periods, which most commonly are due to PCOS, hypothyroidism, sometimes uh, the females have ovarian cyst. Now when we uh, go to the fertile females, there may be problems of infertility. As age advances, the females deal with uh, lower abdominal pain due to pelvic infections. Uh, then there may be uterine fibroids, which may again lead to uh, abdominal pains or sometimes abnormal menses. Then you turn to slightly older age, people may have problems related to menopause like hot flashes, vaginal dryness, itching. This is also the age for gynecological malignancies, which are also hormone related like breast cancer, ovarian, uterine, cervical cancers. And in all the sexually active females, there are uh, problems related to sexually transmitted diseases, the HIV being uh, one among them. Uh, besides, uh, there may be also some chronic pelvic pains, uh, which may affect the young girls as well as the elderly females, which is sometimes due to endometriosis, which is again a hormone related uh, problem which can be easily dealt with medications and sometimes may require surgical correction. Right, uh, Doctor, you just mentioned uh, menopause. That takes me to my next question. Menopause marks the end of the childbearing phase of a woman's life uh, that began with puberty. What hormonal changes takes place uh, during that phase of menopause? Doctor Ipshita Mishra, if you could answer that. Okay, uh, now first we should know what menopause is. Now, menopause is usually it is physiological and it is defined as when there is a cessation of menses for 12 consecutive months after you have ruled out all the pathological causes. So usually the age of onset of menopause in Indian females is something around 45 to 50 years. So what happens is when the menopause sets in, the most important is the sex hormones that is estrogen and progesterone, which comes out from the ovaries, that stops coming out. So the functioning of the ovaries is declined and these sex hormones do not are not available for the normal body. So when a woman is deprived of these sex hormones, some of the women they adjust to it, some of the women they do not adjust to it and the most common problem which they face is the climactic symptoms or the vasomotor symptoms which includes your hot uh, so, uh, night sweats, hot flushes, vaginal dryness, dysperineum, so all these group of symptoms they set in. So apart from that, there is also problem with the cognition part. Some women face cognitive problems, mood disorders, and then the cardiovascular health, as Amy Ma'am has already told, that the metabolic and the cardiac part get starts getting involved and you get a spectrum of the cardiovascular metabolic disorders in the postmenopausal women. So apart from this, one most important is the bone health issues also set in. So osteoporosis, the, the pathogenesis of osteoporosis is rather aggravated when menopause sets in. Right, uh, doctor, thank you so much. Uh, knowing the symptoms can also help to manage that in a better way. Are there any specific symptoms as far as menopause is concerned that one experiences? Let me take this question to Dr. Emi Agrewal. Yeah, as Dr. Epsita said that menopause happens or we say that lady has achieved menopause when it's 12 months past the menopause. But as the hormone levels decline even preceding that, so the patients can have these menopausal symptoms even prior to that. It can be even months and years prior to the menopause. So the patient should be aware of these symptoms and also they should be aware that these can occur prior to once the periods uh, stop, it, the patient might be having regular periods at that time. So the one of the most symptoms are non-specific, but one of the commonest symptoms that is seen is flushing. So what happens is here the lady has sudden onset of heat-like sensation in the upper part of the body, in the face. It may be associated with excessive sweating. So that they might have some dizziness also. 
Uh, the problem with this symptom is that they can uh, last for a few seconds to minutes and can be very frequent sometimes. So that can lead to the disturbance in the daily activity and daily routine. And if in night it happens, they can have uh, night sweats, disturbed sleep that leads to increased fatigue, tiredness, joint pains and all these symptoms. Then second group of symptoms may be because of the mood disorder. Again, these are very non-specific, like anxiety because of the menopausal symptoms, or the patient may end up with a depression, or the patient may have uh, other psychological issues related to the menopause. Then thirdly, because of decline in the hormone, these patients may have vaginal dryness. This is one of the specific symptoms may be related to the menopause. They may, but they may also also manifest with recurrent vaginal infection and recurrent urinary tract infection. If the patient has knowledge about these symptoms that it may be because of menopause, so treatment of these symptoms like vaginal dryness with local creams will sometimes heal even the urinary tract infection. So it is very important that patient has the knowledge of these symptoms, otherwise patients may be running to the various specialities like cardiologist for increased heart rate which may be associated with the menopause or psychiatrist, but the basic uh, cause may remain undetected and untreated. Right, uh, doctor, you did mention hot flashes. Uh, that is very common as far as menopause is concerned. What can a woman do to prevent and minimize uh, the incidence of hot flashes? If I can take this question to Dr. Hema Singh. So, uh, when ma'am has talked about hot flashes, definitely it affects the quality of life of the patients and the severity may vary from mild symptoms to very severe dreadful symptoms. Uh, which may land up you in the OPD of a cardiologist. So before we move on to medication, it's very important that we try to do certain changes in our lifestyle. First and most important is to eat healthy diet full of fruits, vegetables, have a proper night's sleep, avoid spicy food, avoid alcohol smoking. This is not only going to improve your hot flashes but otherwise overall health also. It's very important to maintain an ideal body weight. It has been found that obese females, they have more frequent and more severe hot flashes. Then you can try certain mild relaxation techniques like meditations and yoga. Keep the temperature of the room slightly on the lower side. And you can just keep uh, less clothes during night time since most of the uh, Flashes usually occur uh, at night in most of the females. Now, if these lifestyle changes are not working, we do have certain medications. So, you can go for uh, non-hormonal medications like certain SSRIs and antidepressants, which are quite helpful in many patients of mild to moderate symptoms. But in case the symptoms are not relieved with this, patients can also choose to get hormone replacement therapies. So these can be in the form of tablets or vaginal creams, gels, pessaries. They not only reduce your hot flashes but also help in uh, removing the vaginal dryness, itching and it's also good for maintaining the bone health. But they do have certain uh, complications in certain selected group of patients related to cardiovascular disease, blood clotting, slightly increased risk of breast cancers. So, uh, this has to be chosen very correctly by the patients and the doctors before prescribing. Right, uh, doctor, thank you so much uh, for telling us uh, about how we can minimize uh, those uh, hot flashes situations during the menopause uh, phase and uh, lifestyle changes are key. With that, we're sipping into a very short break. We'll get you a whole lot more on our show, Health and Wellness, Myths and Facts on the other side. Welcome back. You're watching Health and Wellness Myths and Facts. We have Dr. Mishra, Dr. Grewal, and Dr. Singh with us. Let me take uh, my next uh, question uh, to Dr. Mishra. Undergoing a hysterectomy, uh, that is the surgery to remove all or part of the uterus, can raise many health concerns. Can a hysterectomy cause menopause? Dr. Ipshita Mishra. Okay, right. Uh, menopause, uh, mostly it is physiological, normal. When around 45 years, the functioning of the ovaries, the decline and the sex steroids production goes down. 
but what happens in in surgical menopause if the uterus is removed with both the ovaries then there is a sudden decrement in the production of the sex steroids so but if the uterus is removed with sparing either a single or both the ovaries so you have different modalities of surgery then uh, the issues in terms of manifestations of the symptoms of menopause are not great because the ovaries still produce the sex steroids but if both the ovaries are removed then definitely that when there is a sudden decrement in the levels of the sex steroids there are always sheer chances that the woman feels the deprivation of these hormones suddenly quite markedly so because in a natural physiological menopause there is something called as a menopausal transition period so 3 to 4 years prior to the onset of the full menopause the body starts gradually adjusting to the lower levels of the sex steroids but when suddenly it is decreased by a surgical procedure then the marked symptoms in terms of the climacteric symptoms such as hot flashes and night sweats they are relatively more in those women where a surgical menopause occurs in certain group of a woman having surgical menopause right uh, thank you so much uh, doctor my next question is can hormone therapy help treat and manage the symptoms of menopause dr grewal yeah definitely as uh, we have discussed earlier that uh, these menopausal symptoms can sometimes be very distressing as uh, we have already discussed the lifestyle modification after the lifestyle and dietary modification if the patient has severe intractable flushing or night sweats in those cases we have to start the hormone therapy then other condition where it will help is in the case of mood disturbances and also if the patient has excessive vaginal dryness or if there is decrease in the sex drive uh with the long term effect of these hormone will also be that these hormones will improve the bone density or rather prevent the decline in the bone density so we know that the post menopausal period the patient start having decrease in the bone density so they end up with the fractures what we say is osteoporosis so that also will be prevented though this is not primarily the treatment for osteoporosis uh, so any patient who has intractable symptoms of menopause uh, primarily flushing or night sweat mood changes vaginal dryness hormonal therapy is definitely going to help so these actually are the normal estrogen and progesterone which are given to the patient if the patient has hysterectomy in that case only estrogens are enough uh, as we have already discussed the patients can be on oral tablets uh, the better form are patches and gels and if it is only just the local symptoms like vaginal irritation dryness in those cases the local creams as well as the tablets will also help uh these days there is so much of concern about the side effect but most of the patient if well chosen and they are they have baseline better investigations in those cases many of these patients can be started safely on the hormone therapy uh, some patients like who had previous history of uh, breast cancer or uterine or ovarian cancer or who had uncontrolled hypertension who has history of having blood clots those patients should not be started on the hormone replacement therapy and it has been seen that if the patients are started on the therapy uh prior to 10 years after the onset of menopause they do not have much side effect but the side effects are much more if the patients are of older age or have passed more than 10 years after the menopause yeah right uh, doctor uh, you did mention some of the complications what are the main health complications that can occur with menopause can we prevent these health complications dr hema say the estrogen hormone uh, the basic female hormone uh, doesn't only have reproductive functions but it do have uh, important functions in maintaining the overall health for female so talking about menopause there is a reduction in estrogen hormone that is why uh, there is affection of the cardiovascular system so uh, your cholesterol levels may increase your risk of having a heart attack may increase so this is the ideal time that is the peri peri menopausal period where you may meet your physician just check your blood pressure check your lipids and blood sugars because these may be additional risk factors for your cardiac diseases besides maintaining a good and healthy lifestyle now 
when menopause occurs in the first 5 years there's a rapid fall in the bone mass which leads to a condition of brittle bones called osteoporosis and this osteoporosis uh, there is increased risk of fractures especially your spine your wrist and your hip so perimenopausal and postmenopausal females they are at increased risk of fractures so it's very important you take a healthy protein rich diet with good amount of calcium and if your diet doesn't contain good amount of calcium maybe you can take some calcium vitamin d supplements so that your bones are healthy menopause uh, can also lead to urinary incontinence in some females uh, since uh, the pelvic muscles becomes lax so it's a good thing to practice your pelvic muscle strengthening exercises and in some cases the hormonal replacement therapy also helps in this incontinence then as uh, dr gravel has rightly said uh, there is increased vaginal dryness which may sometimes lead to recurrent urinary tract infections also uh, also uh, certain females they actually experience weight gain they come with a problem of weight gain uh, following menopause and this is basically because your metabolic rate slows down so it's very important that at this time we cut down slight calories start exercising and maintain our body weight so that we are actually spared from the other metabolic diseases like diabetes dyslipidemias and cardiac diseases which may follow following menopause Thank you, doctor, for uh, that answer, and also thanking uh, Dr. M. E. Garewal, Dr. Hema Singh, Dr. Ipshita Mishra for joining us here on NDTV on our special show, Health and Wellness Myths and Facts. Thank you so much for watching.